Hello everyone, welcome to Chemizon Complete Chemistry. So in our today's video, we are going to see some of the solutions of the questions that were asked in this year's TIFR paper that was held yesterday. So let us see our first question. So our first question is based on which chapter? Chemical Kinetics. So the question was, it was given that the reaction is a first order reaction, which is 63.5% complete in 100 seconds. We have to find out the half-life of a reaction. So what is the formula for half-life for a first order reaction? T half, that is half-life is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K. K is the rate constant. So for that, what we have to do, we have to first find out the rate constant because the value of rate constant is not given to us. But what is given is 63.5% reaction is complete in 100 seconds. So time is given that is 100 seconds. Let's say we consider initial concentration is let's say 100 that is 0% is reacted and after time t or 100 second what is the what will be the amount of reactant left what is 80 80 is the amount of reactant left after time t amount of reactant left after time t so initially it was 100 how much is reacted reacted is 63.5 percent is reacted so how much will be left over it is 36.5 so k is equal to 1 upon t into ln of a0 by a t. This is the formula for first order kinetics. k is equal to 1 upon t. What is 1 upon t? t is how much? 100 second. ln a0 is 100. a t is how much? 36.5. If you solve this, the final answer will be for rate constant, it will be 0 0.01 seconds. So now we have the rate constant, so we can find out the half-life. Half-life will be 0 0.6, 0 0.693 divided by 0 0.01 unit of, this will be 1 by 100 seconds. So the unit of rate constant is 0 0.01 second inverse, second inverse. So when you solve this, this will be how much? 0 0.693, 0 0.01 I can write it as 10 raised to minus 2 second inverse. This will go to the numerator, this will become 0 0.693 into 10 raised to 2 seconds, which is equal to 69.3 seconds. And the answer given was 69 seconds. That is the final answer for this question. Let us see the second question. The reaction is given, that is, two water molecules decompose to form one mole of oxygen gas pressure is one bar plus four h plus aqueous plus four electrons and temperature is 298 kelvin the standard cell emf that is e0 cell was given to us that is minus 1.23 volt and it was asked what is the oxidation potential now what is the meaning of oxidation potential this reaction here you can see there is loss of electrons or oxidation that is why it was asked it is what is the oxidation potential here oxidation potential means it was nothing it was e cell that was asked to us so what we are going to use we are going to use here nurse equation okay nurse equation what is nurse equation e cell is equal to E0 cell E0 cell minus 2.303 RT by NF log to the base 10 of Q. Q is what? Q is the reaction quotient. What is reaction quotient? Reaction quotient is concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants. Okay, one more data was given to us here, that is pH is equal to 7. Okay, so now for finding out E cell, we want E0 cell that is given to us. 
and we have to find out Q and temperature is given 298 R we know it is 8.314 Joule per Kelvin per mole and temperature given is 298 Kelvin so when you substitute what we will get E cell is equal to E0 cell is minus 1.23 volt minus this value of 2.303 RT by F okay 2.303 RT by F is how much 0 0.0591 only when the temperature is 298 Kelvin okay so minus 0 0.0591 divided by n what is n n is the total number of electrons that are involved electrons involved in the reaction how many electrons are involved here you can see four electrons are involved so value of n is four and log to the base 10 of we have to take only the active concentration so concentration of product here is h plus ion so h plus ion power is 4 okay pressure into pressure of oxygen that is 1 bar so we will neglect this and divided by this is not an active concentration active aqueous state is active in case of in in the presence of liquid and aqueous phase which is active concentration aqueous okay so now what we have to do log of a raised to m i can write it as m log a this power i can bring down so e cell is equal to minus 1.23 volt minus 0 0.0591 divided by 4 into 4 log to the base 10 of h plus ion now what is ph ph is minus log to the base 10 of h plus ion so this minus log to the ba base 10 of h plus ion i can write it as ph and this 4 and 4 gets cancelled so minus 1.23 volt plus 0 0.0591 into ph when we substitute this minus 1.23 volt plus 0 0.0591 into pH is 7. You solve this, the final answer will be minus 0 0.816 volt. Okay, so this is the final answer. Let us see the next question. So, diameter of a moving electron that is given to us, that is how much? That is 1 Armstrong. And we have to find out the uncertainty in its velocity. This is mass of what? Mass of electron is given to us. Okay, in the useful data, if you had seen, this mass was given. Okay, 9.109 into 10 raised to minus 31 kilogram. So, this is question based on which principle? Heisenberg uncertainty principle. What does this principle state? That it is not possible to simultaneously find out the position as well as momentum delta p into delta x greater than or equal to h by 4 pi okay for our convenience we assume it to be equal to so that we can calculate now what is linear momentum m into v so here delta p is equal to m into delta v what is delta v delta v is nothing but the uncertainty in velocity that we have to find out uncertainty in velocity that we have to find out so m into delta v into delta x is equal to h by 4 pi delta v is equal to h by 4 pi m into delta x now what we can do we have to convert delta x that is given one armstrong in meter what is 1 Armstrong? Armstrong is 10 raised to minus 10 meter. So what is the value of H? Planck's constant is 6.626 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule second. Joule second I can write it as what is the unit of joule? Kg meter raised to 2 second raised to minus 2 joule into second divided by 4 into value of pi is 3.14 mass of electron is 9. 109 into 10 raised to minus 31 kg into 
delta x is 10 raised to minus 10 meter. Okay, now let us cancel the units. Kg, kg gets cancelled. 1 meter, meter get cancelled. This second raised to 2, minus 2 into second raised to 1, minus 2 plus 1 is how much? Minus 1. So this is what? This is second inverse. So the final answer of velocity we will get in meter per second. So what is going to be the final answer? The final exact answer for velocity we are going to get is 579 579150 meter per second. Now we know 1 kilometer is how much? 10 raised to 3 meter. So 1 meter will be 10 raised to minus 3 kilometer. This 10 raised to 3 goes on the left. It becomes 10 raised to minus 3. So we, we have to divide this by 1000. We will get 579.2 kilometer per second. This approximately is equal to 580 kilometer per second. This was the final answer that was given to us. 580 kilometer per second. Now let us see the next question. So this was the question asked from thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics. What is given? This is the equation that is given. 2 mole of H2 react with 1 mole of oxygen to form 2 mole of water. At 25 degree Celsius, delta H that is the enthalpy change is given to us. What is the enthalpy change? Minus 572 kilojoule. Delta U was asked. What is delta U? Internal energy change. Internal energy change. Now what is the formula of relation between delta H and delta U that we get from first law? Delta U is equal to delta H is equal to Delta H is equal to delta U plus delta N G R T. So what how will what will be the equation of delta U? Delta U will be delta H minus delta N G R T. Now what is delta N G? Delta N G is moles of gaseous product minus moles of gaseous reactant. What is the mo moles of gaseous product? Gaseous product here there is only liquid water. So 0 minus 2 moles of H2 plus 1 mole of oxygen. 2 plus 1 is 3. 0 minus 3 is how much? Minus 3. Value of delta H. We have to convert it into joules. Minus 572 kilojoule. Kilo means 10 raised to 3. So 1 kilojoule is 10 raised to 3 joules. So minus 572 into 10 raised to 3 joules minus of delta Ng is minus 3 into 8.314 value of R is 8.314 joule per Kelvin per mole. What is R? R is the universal gas constant into temperature 25 degree Celsius. How do you convert it into Kelvin? Plus 273.15 that is 298.15 Kelvin. Okay, so why I had convert, converted kilojoule to joule because here you can see Kelvin and Kelvin inverse get cancelled. This is joule per mole. So what here this is mole. So mole and mole inverse get cancelled. Mole and mole inverse get cancelled. So here this is joule. Value of R is in joules. That is why we have to convert this into joule. We can add or subtract only the same units. Okay. This when you solve the final answer for delta U will be how much? Final answer for delta U is going to be minus 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 7.3 joule. If you want to convert it into kilojoule, it will be minus 564.6 kilojoule. What I have done? I have divided it by 1000. So this I can write it as minus 565 kilojoule. So this was the final answer that was given.
Now let us see the next question. For an endothermic reaction, predict the rate of forward and backward reaction on increasing the temperature. So this is based on which law? This is based on Lee Chatelier principle. Okay, so let us assume one reaction A plus B giving C. This is an endothermic reaction. That means delta H is what? Delta H is positive for an endothermic for an endothermic reaction. And this is an equilibrium reaction. So arrow will be this. Now forward reaction is endothermic. Endothermic means heat is absorbed. So if heat is absorbed, forward reaction will be favored. Okay, rate of forward reaction will increase because endothermic means heat is absorbed and we are providing heat. Increasing temperature means heating. Okay, heating the reaction mixture. When we provide heat, the forward reaction is favored because it is endothermic in nature. So, what will be the correct answer? Correct answer is rate of forward reaction will increase. And if, if the forward reaction is endothermic, backward reaction is what? It is exothermic reaction. So, rate of exothermic reaction will or backward reaction will decrease. Because it is an exothermic reaction, heat is evolved. If we want to favor an exothermic reaction, what we have to do? We have to do cooling so that the heat that is released by an exothermic reaction, it is absorbed by let's say some ice bath or water bath. Okay, so rate of forward reaction increases, rate of backward reaction decreases. Now let us see this next question. Maximum area of a rectangle made from string or wire of length L is how much? So what is the area of the rectangle? Area of the rectangle is how much? Area of the rectangle is length into breadth. So what we can do instead of guessing what length and breadth we can take from a string of length L, what we can do? Length, total length is L, that means what is given to us is perimeter of a rectangle is given, that is L. Perimeter of a rectangle is given, that is L. So what we can do is we can what is the formula for perimeter of a rectangle? 2 into length plus breadth. So whenever we multiply two lengths, obviously the final answer will have a term of L square. So first option is incorrect. Now how did they get L square by 2? L by root 2 into L by root 2. So what is length? L by root 2. Breadth is also L by root 2. So we can substitute in this formula L by root 2 plus L by root 2. Okay, base is common. So we can add 2 into L plus L is 2L by root 2 is common. So we are getting 4L by root 2. Is this the perimeter that is given? No. So B is also incorrect. Now C, how did they get C option? L square by 4. This will be L by 2 into L by 2. We can substitute here now. L by 2 into length is L by 2. Breadth is also L by 2. 2 into L by 2 plus L by 2. Okay, base are common. Add 2 L by 2. You can cancel 2 and 2. The final answer is 2 L. Is the length given 2 L? No. So C option is incorrect. Now let us see last option. L square by 16. This how they have got this L by 4 into L by 4. This is length, this is breadth. So I can just change this L by 4, 4. Base is common. L plus L is 2L. 2. So 2 ones are. 2 ones are 2 twos are and this 2 and 2 also get cancelled so the final answer of perimeter is L so the correct answer here it is going to be option D that is L square by 16 now let us see one more question this is again from 
थर्मोडाइनमिक्स मोलार एंट्रोपी एंट्रोपीज वॉट एंट्रोपी इज नथिंग बट मेजर ऑफ डिसऑर्डर इन द सिस्टम ओके एंट्रोपी डिसऑर्डरलीनेस और डिसऑर्डर इन द सिस्टम If the disorder is more, we say entropy is more. We have to find out the entropy of ice at two seventy three Kelvin and one atmosphere. Now the first option given is zero. What is the formula for entropy change? Delta S entropy change of a system is delta H of fusion. Okay, for the process of melting, we are writing for the process of melting. Delta H of fusion divided by T melting. that is a melting point now molar entropy of ice at 273 kelvin and one atmosphere if you have marked the answer is zero that is going to be incorrect why because if you have thought that third law of thermodynamic state that at absolute zero temperature okay at absolute zero temperature the entropy changes how much zero Now we have to understand the meaning of absolute zero temperature. What is the meaning of absolute zero temperature? Absolute zero temperature means zero Kelvin. Okay, and if we want to convert it into degree Celsius, it is going to be zero minus two seventy three point one five. So at zero Kelvin or minus two seventy three point one five Kelvin, at this temperature the entropy change is going to be zero. Here, two seventy three Kelvin is not absolute temperature. It is zero degree Celsius. Okay, absolute temperature means zero Kelvin or minus two seventy three point one five degree Celsius. If this temperature was given, then your answer would have been right. But here, it depends on what? It depends on temperature that is given to us. That is two seventy three Kelvin. So, independent of temperature is not correct. independent of pressure is also not the correct answer the correct answer here it is going to be option b that is it depends on the latent heat of fusion i hope you have understood all the questions discussed discussed in this part we will see some more questions in the coming video thank you so much